All right. If anyone in the chat can hear me, just push one. All right. <clears throat> All right, I got a confirmation. Thank you for that confirmation. Welcome back to Black Brain Trust. This is episode 555, Black Pandemic Talk. Yo, please hit the like button as you come in, share the video if possible, hit that notification bell so you get all the updates from the Black Brain Trust, including those posted on the community tab. There's a document description beneath the video for you to follow along with. If you want to engage in this discussion, there'll be a link in the chat for you to click on. When you click on the link, make sure you raise your hand so that one of us can acknowledge you and advantage to the panel. Make sure that your Zoom client has been updated to version 5.0.5 before joining the panel. Link is in the chat. We'll get started in about 30 seconds. Let me just make some updates to the, uh, to the channel real quick. All right, let me get started real quick, man, because I don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, link is in the chat. The first item on the docket is from fastcompany.com. This UV light bug zapper can discontaminate or decontaminate 695 masks an hour. So this has been talked about for a while. Um, the lack of N95 mask um, and you know PPE for a lot of your first uh, responders and uh, essential workers makes it difficult for people to actually go out and do their jobs. Um, the best option is for doctors to not reuse masks. But during the shortages of the last few months, a team of engineers from uh, Lee University helped a nearby hospital come up with a stopgap solution to make reusing masks safer. So. Yeah, UV light using um you, you know using UV light on this makes a lot of sense. Um, we know that that's been um, known for uh, uh, killing killing bacteria in the past. You you even see some gadgets um, putting UV lights inside people's sneakers to kill to kill the um, I guess you know fungus or athlete's foot or something like that. So. I'm surprised I had to come up with this a long time ago, you know, three or four months ago. Um, it's kind of late in the game now, you know, you're already in the uh, bottom of the ninth, so to speak. So just wanted to share this real quick. Uh, I know Dr. Phoenix and uh, Super Triz work as RNs and, um, you know, they're, you know, hobbling around their, their mask as well. So thought that was pretty interesting. All right, this is from CNBC.com. 
U.S. coronavirus cases have been slowly ticking up since Memorial Day. Let me expand this up. Coronavirus cases in the United States have been slowly ticking up since the Memorial Day holiday, according to CNBC anal uh, analysis of data compiled by John Hopkins University. New cases hit a peak of 31,578 based on a seven day average on April 10th before steadily failing to, or uh, falling to a uh, eight week low of just over 20,600 a day on May 28th and have been rising ever since. New cases in the US has uh, have risen over the last three days as, in a row with a seven day average of 21,763 new cases reported Wednesday, the day of the show. So let me ask, let you all see this graph right here. Obviously a spike since March 15th up to April 12th. New reported cases by April 26th slows down just after uh, April 26th to May 10th. And then by May 24th, you start to see a little bit more uh, here. So research shows that it, that it can take anywhere from five to 12 days for people to show symptoms from the coronavirus, which may explain why US cases are only just now starting to rise after several states reopen beaches and relax social distancing rules over Memorial Day, which fell on May 25th. The virus, however, can spread a lot earlier than that and can even be passed along by people who, do, who don't have any symptoms according to the World Health Organization. COVID-19 patients who develop symptoms are contagious for one to three days before showing any signs of sickness, WHO said. The coronavirus, which emerged about five months ago, has sickened more than 1.8 million people and killed at least 107,175 in the United States, according to Hopkins data. While cases are slowly in hotspots such as New York State, cases are on the rise in places like Florida, Texas, and Arizona that remove shelter in place orders much earlier. On Thursday, Florida reported 1,419 new coronavirus cases, its biggest single day increase. According to state health data, Florida now has more than 60,000 cases. Earlier in the day, CDC Director Robert Redfield told lawmakers he was worried Americans aren't following the agency's advice as states begin to reopen after shuttering businesses and limiting uh, activities as part of social distancing measures intended to curb the spread of the virus. Crowds of people have been seen in recent weeks at protests over the Memorial Day holiday in Redfield noted at the SpaceX launch over the weekend. All 50 states have begun uh, easing quarantine restrictions even though Redfield said not all states have met the White House criteria for reopening businesses. We will continue to message as well as we can. He told the White, uh, he told the House Appropriations Committee during a hearing on the coronavirus. We're going to encourage people that have the ability to require to wear masks when they are, at, are in their environment to continue to do that. The virus can take anywhere from two weeks to eight weeks from the first onset of symptoms before a patient is sick enough to die according to the WHO. The median time from the first sign of the symptoms to recovery for mild cases is approximately two weeks and between three to six weeks for patients with severe or critical cases, according to the WHO. Earlier in the outbreak, US health officials said there was a hypothesis among mathematical modelers that the outbreak could potentially be seasonal and uh, relent in warmer conditions. Other viral respiratory diseases are seasonal, including influenza, and therefore, in many viral respiratory diseases, we do see a decrease in disease in the spring and summer. Dr. Nancy Messonia, director of the CDC's National Center for Immunization and Respiratory Diseases, said on February 25th, conference call. 
And so we can, we certainly, uh, and so we can certainly be optimistic that this disease will follow suit. However, NIH Director Dr. Francis Collins said in the uh, blog post this week that many researchers now doubt that warmer, uh, warmer weather will stop the virus. We'll obviously wait, we're, sorry, we'll obviously have to wait a few months to get the data, but for now, many researchers have their doubts that the COVID-19 pandemic will enter needed summertime low. He wrote on Tuesday. Among them are some experts on infectious diseases uh, the, uh, transmission and climate modeling, who ran a series of sophisticated computer simulations of how the virus will likely spread over the coming months. You want to reopen up the uh, economy? Good, go ahead. And now you see an uptick in transmission and symptoms. And so that's what they wanted. You know, the tangerine tyrant said, open up the markets. You know, some of these red states were saying, yeah, go ahead and, and open all up. You know, we want business. You know, in Michigan, you had these, uh, you know, Second Amendment mazungas running around the uh, state house talking about, you better open up the market. You better open up the, uh, the economy for us, okay? And now you got new cases coming in and people are acting like, well, you know, that's par for the course. Actually, this is gonna be worse because if it spreads even further, you're gonna have to shut down again. How, how logical is it to open up your economy without testing people? You gotta test people first. Oh, this is uh, the wrong one. Shoot. Yeah, I got the wrong docket. Hmm. All right, let me jump to the next item on the docket. Uh, this is from npr.com or .org. Global COVID-19 deaths surpassed 400,000, okay? The COVID-19 pandemic has now claimed more than 400,000 lives worldwide, according to a data collected by John Hopkins University. The University of University Coronavirus Resource Center noted the grim milestone on Saturday. The United States had at more than 109,000 accounts for more than a quarter of those deaths. Worldwide, more than 6.9 million people have been affected with the coronavirus since the first known cases began to emerge in the Chinese province of Huawei late last year. Experts at John Hopkins uh, say infections are, exposed, are expected to surpass 7 million by midweek. The US has seen more than 1.9 million cases, but in cities across the country, demonstrators have set aside fears of coronavirus in recent days to rally by the thousands against police brutality in mass protests ignited by the death of George Floyd. Public health experts have cautioned that a spike of new cases could follow the demonstrations. Okay, a lot of sick people running around in these uh, in these uh, demonstrations and protests um, in more ways than one sick in the head and then sick, in, sick with respiratory issues. Dr. Fauci, the head of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases told a Washington DC radio station on Friday that the protests are a perfect setup for further spread of the virus. Hmm. Social distancing be damned. I get very concerned as do my colleagues in public health when they see these kinds of crowds, Fauci told WTOP. There certainly is a risk. I can say that with confidence. A, as demonstrations continue, many states are moving forward with enacting reopening plans to revitalize their economies. 
easing restrictions put in place stopped by the spread of the coronavirus and allowing more businesses to open their doors or expand operations. Revelers in Las Vegas were able to return to the city's iconic casinos on Thursday as they reopened for the first weekend since Nevada shut them down in March. Though casino staff donned masks, patrons weren't required to wear them. And according to the Associated Press report, many did not. New York City, which has registered more than uh, registered more cases than any other city in the nation, is scheduled to enter the first phase of its reopening on Monday. Other portions of New York State have already uh, been allowed to ease restrictions weeks ago, and some regions are even entering the second phase. Though considered one of the more comprehensive tallies of, of coronavirus infections and deaths, John Hopkins tracker is often acknowledged to come up short. Obstacles to testing, especially early on in the pandemic, have been cited as one reason why coronavirus figures may fail to paint a truly accurate picture. Public officials and, government, and governments have also been accused of impending, uh, impeding the release of accurate statistics or even acknowledging the vi uh, crisis. In Brazil, second only to the U.S. in number of cases, accusations of a cover-up follow the removal of death of death and infection totals from the health ministry's website on Saturday. Jair Bolsonaro, the country's president, called for the figures misleading and the ministry is now releasing only a daily count. Bolsonaro has repeatedly clashed with public uh, health experts during the pandemic, including his own health ministries, with one minister re uh, resigning about a month after his predecessor was fired. According to John Hopkins, Brazil has seen more than 672,000 cases and nearly 36,000 deaths. That's a lot of people, man. Russia has also uh, bedeviled public health experts with comp uh, comparatively low tally of COVID-19 related deaths despite having the third highest number of cases in the world. So, yeah, go ahead and reopen the economy, go out there and protest, okay? Go do your demonstrations, go out there and twerk in front of the cameras and, and, and you know, take a knee and hold hands and, you know, uh, hug cops and stuff like that. Go ahead and spread it. You're going to catch it. We got to go on 11 on the panel of Super Tris. Ah, como vai com todos? Espero que tudo é muito bem com sua família e todos que vocês amam. Isso. What's going on, guys? Show sure, man. All right, man. What I say was, man, how's everybody doing? What's going on? You know, hopefully uh, everything's going with, going good with all that you love. But anyhow, yeah, man, uh, Brazil, yeah, just talking about them, they got, got a little bit of a problem there, man. Uh, they got the beaches open down there as well, so so the beaches started to open up again, so. Mm -hmm. On Copacabana, so very problematic. Uh, you know, it seems to be hitting there as well. It seems to be getting hitting a lot of older people, um, and they don't really have a, you know, the, you know, even though they have a the nationalized medical system, it seems like it's, you know, a lot of people are poor and, you know, a lot of people are not getting to the hospital some time. And, um, you know, the social distancing is not really working well for a lot of them, um, though, though a lot are doing it. But still, you know, they got problems going on. And I'm just looking at this whole opening up the beaches kind of thing. I'm a little I'm, I'm highly suspect of that. But yeah. let them do what they got to do. Is it that serious to go to the beach, though? Like, what, why do you need to be at a beach <laughs> during the pandemic? La Praia Sua Vila. The, the 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 beach is their life man you know uh you know it's it's, it's their life you know it's you know a big part of copacabana and that area you know you go in that area you go into places like curitiba or florianopolis or you know these other you know, all these other places that have beautiful beaches you know SCF, uh -huh. you know, and, you know up north and all you know these places they have um beaches are very nice so yeah that, that's part it's part of it's part of the lifestyle it's part of the life so um, that's just how it is. It's like being in Miami, like Miami Beach, you know? It's just like being down there. It's, just, it's part of the game. 
you know, you, you, you're going to be there. So cutting that off is cutting like off a big part of the life, if you know. So a lot of people think the beach is life, you know, it makes you, you know, it helps to revive you. So a lot of people feel about it, especially people who, who, who live by beaches all their lives. That's how they see it. So, you know, that's, it is what it is. All right, let me jump to this next item on a docket from Ars Technica. SARS-CoV-2 looks like a hybrid of viruses from two different species. I mean, this yo-yo is holding up a bat. One of the longest questions about this pandemic is a simple one. Where did it come from? How did a virus that had seemingly never infected a human before make a sudden appearance in our species equipped with what it needed to sweep from China uh, through the globe in a matter of months. Analysis of the virus's genome was ambiguous. Some analysis placed its origin within the local bat population. Others highlighted similarities uh, to uh, uh, pangolins, which might have been brought to, to the uh, area by the wildlife trade. Less evidence-based ideas included an escape from a research lab or a misplaced bioweapon. Now, a US-based research team has done a detailed analysis of a large collection of viral genomes. And it finds that evolution pie uh, pieced together the virus from multiple parts, most from bats, but with a key contrib uh, contribution from uh, pangolins. It's, it's pangolins, pangolins, I know, I know what they are. Yeah, yeah, they're ugly, ugly little things. Yeah, um, but 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 very very human like, very human, very human like, very human like, unbelievable, very 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 human like, mm -hmm. how they act and, and and all that. They it's, it's it's you can't believe people can eat those animals, but you know. how do pieces emotional, of emotional? Uh, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. How do pieces of a virus from different species end up being mashed together? Their underlying biology is uniquely viral twist on a common biological process, recombination. In cells, recombination is a normal part of genetics. Anytime two DNA molecules share extensive similarities, it's possible for them to exchange uh, uh, pieces. The result is a hybrid molecule, a stretch of DNA from one parental piece of DNA uh, followed by a stretch from the other. As a result, some of the differences between the two parent molecules get scrambled. Some from each parent will end up on the final molecule. Recombination is a normal part of the reproduction of com complicated cells. If you have, sorry, if you happen to have an offspring, you've given that child a set of chromosomes that are a mix, uh, mix of pieces from the ones you were given by your mother and your father. Recombination can also take place in simpler cells, where it has been the primary tool that we've uh, used to engineer new or altered genes into the genome of bacteria. And since the molecules from, sorry, since the molecules that perform recombination aren't especially picky about which DNA molecules they work with, DNA viruses that infect cells can sometimes become recombine if more than one strain of viruses a virus infects a single cell. I'm not going to get into all of this, but you know, um, th this is a more of a Dr. Phoenix area, if anything else. Um, I know he, uh, he and Super Tris has worked in this area, um, fighting it um, as essential uh, workers, but it all leads back to uh, different species um, somehow getting, you know, getting into the uh, uh, local population down there in, uh, in the country of China. So I don't know. I, I think I think one of the big questions is whether or not um, whether or not this hybridization is something that's naturally occurring or if it's something that's been, um, you know, uh, something that has been uh, kind of spearheaded inside of a lab. Um, Why would you say that? Knowing that it's an RNA-based virus and, um, you know, it's one strain can easily, uh, you know, it's one strand can easily uh, 
mutate, reverse transcriptase, a good player, a big player in this in this thing. It can move real funky, highly mutagenic. Why would you say that? Well, I mean, because well, you know, and and I, I don't want to I don't want to come off as some sort of conspiracy theorist, but I just like to I, I just like to kind of you know plot out you know all the possibilities, all the partic- all the potential tangents, you know, and see what their trajectory is. Um, or and in some cases we go we we start at the actual endpoint and 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 work our way back to a point of origin, um, and from this particular per, uh, perspective, you know the article referenced the fact that we had never seen this particular uh, pathogen, you know, infecting a human host, um, you know, in our history. So it's like, well, you know, it's kind of convenient that that now we see an emergence of this particular strain of a coronavirus, the COVID nineteen, to be exact. Um, so the, the question then becomes, especially when we look at the actual, the first, uh, the first actual emergence of this virus occurred in proximity to a lab in Wuhan, China. So one could surmise that this, this, this virus was potentially might have been uh, man-made or at least at some point to, uh, tampered with to display certain characteristics. Um, now, I'm not saying that's the case, but that's definitely something that has yet to be completely ruled out. So, um, and, and, and this just fuels um, people um, who, who, number one, um, people try to find any excuse they can not to take, you know, certain precautions, not to social distance, not to adhere to guidelines set out by the CDC or World Health Organization. Um, and at the end of the day, it's one of those cases where People who, you know, are usually people who don't understand the impact are those who are not going to be responsible for the fallout. Like, well, I'm sorry. I I just want to say this. H1N1 virus and and, and how it looks, COVID, how it's structured from a uh, from an RNA uh, 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 basis with respect to its. uh, to the various uh, nucleic acids that, 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 that it has looks very similar to that of the common cold. Um, and then some other viruses that we've seen. So this is not a virus, a COVID virus that we are, let's say, totally unfamiliar with in some of its structure. We've seen this around for a long time. In fact, the common cold is very, very closely related to this. So we, and we don't have a cure for that now to this very day. Um, maybe there wasn't a press for it because it wasn't because uh, common cold is not virulent where it, where it, where it can kill you. But we do have regular, you know, um, other uh, uh, H1N1 or N3, the different viruses that do exist that we have uh, flu viruses that kill 30,000, 50,000 people a, a, a every year. So um, some young and, and some old. So we have seen these types of viruses around. This particular strain that we see, which is now we see that is mutating and moving into a few different areas there, at least um, I understand now that they're trying to work on um, seven different uh, uh, vaccines. Uh, they are a multitude right now of, of, of mutations from this virus that we've seen here. This might mutate into something much, much weaker and, 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 and not become a, and not be, and not become a, a great problem of which people are hoping for. But we have seen this type of virus around before. So I think a lot of this lab stuff and all this kind of stuff like that, that we're talking about was created somewhere. This is a, this is a rather common type of a virus in its structure. It's, it's kind of common. This particular one is, a, is, 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 is a little bit different like you see, but there's a lot of things that arise that we haven't seen before that we were uh, able to, um, you know, the body was able to defend itself against. Um, and sometimes you have things that come about that, you know, can be a lot more virulent. I mean, certainly like we saw in 1918 with respect to that H1 virus that we saw back then, which was very virulent. And then it weakened. We hadn't seen that before. And it took took out close to 100 million people from what my understanding. Um, so we, we don't know. We, we've, we've seen these kind of viruses before. Um, this one's a little bit different. Is it specifically made up in a lab to to be deadly? Um, I, I have some doubts about that because this thing is deadly, but it's not as virulent as a bioweapon would be or actually should be. 
Um, and I'm not saying that they made it in the lab to be a bioweapon, but let's say if, if it was, that's, that's, that's what that connotes when people talk about a lab-based virus and was, did this come out of there? I don't know. I still think there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of hokey pokey behind that. Um, I, I, I just think, you know, pandemics and viruses arise and, um, that's just a part of the game. That's just a part of, of being, of being human. I think there were huge pandemics in the past that wiped out many people. Um, um, you know, you know, we we're wiped out many over thousands of years. So I think this is just a part of, uh, this is just part of living, of, of, of living on this earth. I think that's, this is just part of it. Um, and I don't, I, I'm, I'm not too quick to go in on the, uh, on this, on this lab based stuff and saying, well, it's all from China. Cause it may have been from China. We're not really sure. We, we, you know, I hear people because my brother works at a lab. Well, actually, he works at a, excuse me, at a, at, 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 at some nursing home facilities that have a series of nursing homes. He talks to the CDC every day, and I talk with him on a regular, consistent basis. And um, they're not sure where this came from. <laughs> you know, they, they they're not entirely sure. So I'm just telling you that right now from the CDC. So a lot of stuff out there. We don't we don't really know. We, we do know its shape, we do know its structure, um, and we are putting vaccines against it, but most people who seem to get this do not die from it. That's what it seems so far. Most who, do not, most who get it do not die from it. Is Trin still with us? I don't know. Yeah, Trin's on mute. Um, yeah, so I, I'm sorry, I, I went outside, I had to, uh, you know, when I go outside, my uh, Wi-Fi switches over to my uh, my regular cell phone service. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and, and I hear everything that Glenn is saying. And again, um, this is something that obviously I don't know. I mean, uh, whether you know whether or not this was lab created or whether or not this was something that's naturally occurring. I mean, again, I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying that, you know, from my pers uh, from my perspective, I I, I can't preclude. Um, an actual uh, lab created, or at least some type of genetic tampering, might have contributed to the emergence of this of this particular virus. When, when, when I say I can't preclude, that means that I'm not confirming or denying because I, I simply don't, don't know. I mean, the possibility is there that it is naturally occurring. The possibility is there that it was uh, either genetically modified or, or uh, synthesized inside of a lab. Um, and and I think that you know I think I think we're kind of on agreement. My my point was that um, with with so much speculation, there's there there isn't anything definitive being put out. Um, this is this is often used as uh, ammunition out of the who either you know you know used as a uh, as as a, as a way to um, point to some type of conspiracy theory or fear. Who believe that this is all a hoax that there really isn't a virus um that you know that, that and and you know again uh, uh, I, I, i'm not here to condemn anybody's particular perspective um but but um i'm just saying trish we're losing you um All right, let me, let me just read this piece real quick. Um, worry and evidence. There's some good news in all of this. Rumors about this being an escape weapons experiment make little sense in terms of what the genome sequences tell us about biology. Less reassuring. However, is what the sequences tell us about the giant uh, natural experiment that may be going on around us. And that tells us where uh, there appears to be a large number of coronaviruses that are regularly exchanging genetic information. And while exchanges are more common among viruses that uh, infect the same species, it's entirely possible that contributions can come from much more distantly re uh, related ones. The authors find evidence that the, uh, that the viruses from different species may experience distinct selective pressure which isn't really surprising, but that also can produce difficult to predict results uh, when those viruses hop to a new species. And the difficulty will arise if they... What was that?
And I'm not sure what that was. Um, and the difficulty will rise if they then exchange information with over viruses native uh, to, the, to that species. So summing this up, there seem to be a myriad of coronaviruses out there, including plenty we don't know about. And some species are serving uh, as labs in which new gen uh, genetic combinations are created. And right now we only have a very partial window into the sort of uh, potential out there in the species that have frequent contacts with humans. And some research cited by the author suggests that humans have been exposed to at least some of these viruses based on the antibodies, antibodies to them, fortunately without a major outbreak occurring. So this is, you know, this is really tricky. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was kind of saying before, you know, um, you know, that, that these, there's a lot of viruses that's out here, you know, it's kind of dipping around and, you know, we've been exposed to a lot, this, you know, the, the, this, the shape of this virus and how it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, this one's kind of new, but, but, you know, COVID as a virus in itself is, n is not new. So there's a lot of shit that's out here. We, you know, we, we just, we, we really don't know. Could it be man-made? It's possible, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking at, you know, nature as well. Na nature plays a, 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 a lot of uh, roles here too. And, and it's, since it's RNA based, you know, um, it's, it's highly mutagenic. This thing could change into a lot of different things relatively quickly, you know, so it's hitting millions of people, you know, you, you, you know, you just need one change, uh, you know, one, one mutation change in one, uh, in one nucleic acid. And uh, next thing you know, boom, you know, you've got a mutation and it's operating differently. So that can happen very easily with something like this. So I think there's a lot, there's a lot of strains out there right now. I, I do believe, I, you know, and that's what I've been hearing. And, um, you know, I don't know if uh, other people are hearing that, but that's what I've been hearing. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I definitely concur. Um, I think that uh, th this is like one of those things where, like, like if we look back at the, uh, that the at the emergence of the HIV virus, um, there's a lot of speculation surrounding that particular virus because prior to that, to those particular uh, uh, initial cases, nobody had, nobody had ever heard of a virus that behaved in such a manner, um, at, at least not in a significant enough number to pose a, a public health threat. And so uh, and th th this, this is what leads to widespread speculation because there, there's blanks um, in data that, that have not been filled in. Now, do I believe that all the answers are there? Uh, probably not, but, but I know that um, individuals, uh, quote unquote, in the loop have a lot more information than the general populace has. And, 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 and what happens is, is that the information um, that that has that that is uh, that is yet to be revealed. Um, people will fill in the blanks. A lot of times, they'll fill in those blanks with misinformation, um, and this is what I see a lot of is uh, misinformation being spread about. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. Confusion and panic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, the information out here has been terrible, um, and you know, the information highway is where it's been floating down and where it's been coming from. Uh, it's, it's, it's been it's been suspect as well. Um, and you know we we should be hearing from from the experts and the too many other people who are not are, are are out there just just popping and a lot of crap is getting out into the public that we just don't you know we just don't know about it. I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna try to stick with the CDC, you know, national and 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 the NIH, and just try to go with uh with those people um and 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 rely rely on that. But a lot of other stuff is just shaky. This is too much. This has been some of the worst information out on the disease. Uh, uh, process I've ever seen. I've, I've never seen things as bad as this. This is, this is crazy. This is crazy. Poor information. It's just, it's pitiful. You know, I, I think a lot of the misinformation has to do with just the day and times that we're in. Because we have, uh, what we have, we live in a social media era, uh, era where there isn't the system of checks and balances that existed in the past because the actual platforms that disseminated information, there were gatekeepers there. You couldn't just get on CNN. You couldn't just get on MSNBC. Um, you couldn't even get on your local news um, without, uh, you know, passing in front of some sort of gatekeeper um, that, uh, you know, that vetted you. And so now you have people um, who are able just to put out practically anything. And a lot of times the actual, the, the, the competition is to be first with information, not necessarily be the most accurate. 
and this includes some of the even more respected platforms. Um, I think some of them have fallen into that uh, CNN, MSNBC, and you know whatever other uh, uh, popular news organization that you get your information from. I think they're in a race to put out information uh, even before some of the smaller platforms. And so they'll put out practically anything themselves. And then later on, go back and retract and, and, and revise the information that they put out previously. Um, it's almost like, you know, the same, the same concept with how programs are put out nowadays. Basically, any program you buy is basically a beta version because they want to put that, they want to put the program out quicker. And then what they do is they consistently revise the program, revise the program, revise the program until you get the finished product. Um, but the initial people that buy it, you know, they're basically like a test bed. And so same thing with this information. We're just, you know, we just get this information and then, you know, you really got to take it with a grain of salt until, uh, you know, this information has been confirmed or denied or corroborated somehow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next item on the docket is from refi.fr. Uh, so African scientists launched crowdfunding for clinical trials on, on herbal treatment for coronavirus. African researchers are raising funds to carry out their own clinical trials on the uh, Artemisia uh, plant to investigate its potential for treatment of COVID-19. A herbal tea based on Artemisia extract has recently been touted by Madagascar's government as a treatment for the coronavirus. However, no comprehensive clinical trials on the plant's uh, effectiveness against COVID-19 have been carried out. Yeah, that makes sense. I uh, give me a second. I am uh, cautiously optimistic," said Frank Von, uh, Van der Kooi, a researcher from Northwest University, South Africa, who is interested in the reported uh, antiviral properties of the Artemisia plant. Uh, Van der Kooi launched a crowdfunding initiative on the back, uh, Backup Buddy platform run by a nonprofit uh, company based in South Africa and is aiming for an initial fundraising target of 20, 26,000 euros. The cash raised through crowdfunding will be managed by Northwest University. Artemisia, a compound derived from the Artemisia annua plant is used as part of uh, malaria treatment and Van der Kooi has carried out laboratory tests into Artemisia's uh, activity against HIV. This is interesting. The South African expert who has long been uh, involved in, in the analysis of me uh, medicinal plants is teaming up with Jerome Men Monyangi a Cong Congolese doctor from the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Koweri Luabawa. So what it sounds like here is that um, they're going back to indigenous medicine, um, which is interesting on this because if this is to be, the, I don't think they're saying, I think what's being interpreted with a lot of this stuff is that um, they have the cure rather than a um, a treatment, and so this is not to be seen as a cure. This is to be this is to be seen as, you know, um, one possible solution for treatment of people who have already contr um, uh, contracted this uh, 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 virus because. No, like like the article is saying, no one's been able to really test it. But and I'm, I'm interested in understanding how how they even came down to the point of knowing that you know this this plant in particular is a solution. Roughly 1,000 unique molecules have been identified in Artemisia annua, and about 100 in Artemisia afra. Van der Kooi told RFI, we need to determine which of these molecules, such as artemisinin, are important for bioactivity. 
Further chemical analysis on Artemisia needs to be carried out before clinical trials, according to Van der, Van der Kooi. The herb will be broken in, oh man. I'm getting a lot of calls in, sorry. The herb will be broken up into its separate molecules and tested against the virus in a laboratory. You end up with a list of important molecules which need to be pre uh, present during formulation, said Van der Kooi, explaining the process of bio-guided fractionation. The next stage of the formulation involves determining how to put the important molecules into form that is stable and has a shelf life. This is not, uh, we don't have enough time to go over it tonight, but this is really, this is really something. Uh, the Malagasy leader has promoted COVID organics to leaders in several other African countries, recently announcing the, that he would send the herbal tea to Haiti. On the other hand, the WHO said it has yet to receive any data on using Artemisia, Artemisia against the coronavirus, saying there was no basis to claim it was an efficient and effective treatment. South Africa's government said it would assist the authorities of Madagascar. Health, <coughs> Health Minister uh, Zawili uh, McKees said, our scientific research institutions will be willing to support an analysis following discussions, uh, dis uh, discussions with the uh, government. So what's happening here is that um, Africans are coming up with their own solutions. Um, and surprisingly enough, they're looking to export it to Haiti, uh, where the uh, infection rate and in, in, um, death toll is actually really low because because um, considering that Haiti is a third world country at this point via uh, colonialism. So very interesting. I think part of the issue is you have to find uh, willing participants for these sort of trials. And oftentimes uh, these participants are going to come from impoverished areas as opposed to more uh, developed areas. Um, you yeah. can kind of coerce them in, into actually participating. Yeah. Especially if it's that harmful, right? I mean, I mean uh, harmless, right? Because you're talking about a, um, a plant, you know, that's a, uh, naturally grown from the earth that they can actually leverage. Um, it's been known to be used for uh, treatment of HIV as well as um, as well as other other uh, diseases so uh, such as malaria. So I'd be interested in seeing this but the crowdfunding aspect is actually pretty interesting because that allows you know a lot of um, you know uh, you know, support from from pe from common people, civilians uh, uh, at best. You know, coming in and, and uh, hitting that like button and stuff like that in order to get the get the uh, process going. Um, I don't think we have access to it from the United States because it seems like it's um you know based in uh, uh based in South Africa. So, well, I've, I found it kind of interesting because my um. You know, my workout partner, you know, we 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 hit we hit the we sit the gym together, but there's no gym now. But anyway, uh he's Haitian. His uh his parents, of course, are uh are, are Haitian, his grandparents. Uh, apparently they his grandparents got got, got COVID there in their nineties. They they got it. And they were using older Haitian remedies for the problem. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, they were using older uh, uh, Haitian remedies for their issue, and um, they got through it. They're in their 90s, 
so so they were actually using so they had a way of of of, of treating it. herbal stuff they were drinking and all this and they got through it so I, I do think that they are herbal remedies that are out there that we probably are unaware of with our uh with our so so called advanced medicine that can't cure can't cure a lot of things, but uh. Oh well, 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 Nagon, we have to ask ourselves about about advanced medicine. A lot of the advanced medicine um, have origins uh, from uh, components that are naturally occurring in nature. Take for instance, uh, okay. antibiotic penicillin, right? That's a yeah, yeah. something that's naturally occurring in nature that we've actually used um, as an antibiotic. So that's not to say that. Um, you mm-hmm. know, a lot of these herbal herbal remedies that 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 some of these uh you know what, what we would consider archaic cultures have used for centuries for uh, ailments, um they do have some merit. I mean, I remember when I was oh child, no, they I, do. I had, a, I, had a, I, I had an ear infection, and you know, I went to a doctor, and the ear infection kept recurring, and so my mother had called my my grandmother, now deceased, and she got an actual home remedy for my ear infection, resolved that. Also, I had a plantar wart. My grandmother sent over my mama a home remedy, and that's what treated my plantar wart. You know, so some of this stuff actually does work. You know what I mean? What is the, what is the oh yeah, they, they they had they had uh, remedies back in the old days where they used to um, give people um, molded bread when they had certain kind of infections. Really? And they would molded bread. Why, molded why, bread. Why would they need molded bread? What's what's the value behind it? Penicillin you, is a mold. Penicillin uh, is a mold. There you go. Penicillin was in it. And uh, this was an old remedy, um, but yet um, it was based on absolutely uh, accurate medicine, uh, medicinal techniques that, that we use today to, 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 to deal with it. But that was, that's what they used to treat some, a lot of diseases with, molded bread. That was a medicine. Penicillin was there. That's what it was. Anyway, very powerful antibiotic. You know, honey and this kind of stuff too as well. These things all have um, medicinal treatments that can um, remove a lot of diseases. It's all, it's all there. So, yeah. So, yeah. as far as you say, these old, these old remedies, you know, had a lot to it. That's, I think that's the reason why I was bringing this up because, you know, we have a lot of modern medicine. We think this modern medicine today is, oh, we're doing all this miracle stuff. But it really was based on that, uh, on the old time stuff. Um, um, and, and just maybe putting more fancier bottles and, you know, more cool looking drugs. But that's been well, a I mean, of- uh- a, a lot of times what, what modern medicine does is it, it looks at what the active ingredient is and extracts only that. So yeah, like if correct. you look at penicillin, there's a lot of other things in penicillin that are not necessary for the actual um, resolution of, of said infection. So if you're able to uh, ice, extract and then isolate that particular active ingredient, then that's how you end up with these small pills as, as opposed to taking a large quantity of, a, of, a, of an herbal supplement you take a small you know pill and actually the pills themselves they have filler talc and all kind of stuff to you know to give it a specific size but i mean but you, you kind of get the drift yeah absolutely and which, which i find it very interesting the word drug comes from um a um a nordic or swedish derivation of a word that means dried leaves dried leaves that's what they would give people dried leaves that's drug so they meant Interesting. Anyway, go ahead. All right, this is the last item on the docket. Let's go through this real quick. Uh, this is from fastcompany.com. Bad news, six feet of social distance probably isn't enough to avoid COVID-19 outside. Droplets from our coughing, sneezing, and perhaps even talking travel faster than previously suspected. I want to say faster than the... Uh, Faster than the um, speed of light. 186,000 miles per second, it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> As the world opens back up, even with COVID-19 in an, under, in an unrelenting swing, one guideline is repeated again and again, keep six feet of social distance. And this number makes us feel uh, safe because it comes from the authorities. But this number is, according to a new study, inaccurate and flawed. The World Health Organization recommends a three-foot distance to avoid the potential spread of COVID-19 through droplets in the air, be it from coughing, sneezing, or even speaking. But where does that recommendation come from? According to Quartz, one study that's nearly 100 years old, in 1934, 
the Harvard School of Public Health built an apparatus to capture droplets flying out, uh, flying from your mouth through the air. The results of that test stands as the status quo today. Uh, through the C uh, though the CDC doubles the spans, the recommended six feet of social distance between people. But a new study published in the physics uh, in physics of fluids. Uh, which used a sophisticated simulation to model the aerosol spray from a cough is here to challenge both WHO and the CDC's conventional wisdom. What we uh, what we show is we have a significant amount of droplets that can travel beyond six feet in a short period of time, says Demetrius uh, Drikakis, professor at a uh, at University of Nicosia, uh, Cyprus. This is something we need to take into account. The simulation that uh, Tricarcus and his colleague uh, built in technically advanced and accounts for all sorts of variables across physics and fluid dynamics. It includes several mathematical models to simulate air turbulence, humidity, and evaporation. The scientists even filmed a cough, a mouth coughing with a high-speed camera so that they could accurately du uh, duplicate its shape inside of a inside the simulation we chose a cough instead of a sneeze because a sneeze is more violent but less frequent so we chose a cough because it's more common and we chose a mild cough because a more mild cough is more common as well what the study found was that with no wind droplets from a light cough uh, will fall on the ground within six feet these results fall within uh, WHO and CDC best practices for social distancing and those old Harvard lab results. Here's a uh, image that projects, you know, um, a cough with wind and no wind. So, yeah, I, I heard, you know, that this thing could go 32 feet. You know, that 32 feet was uh, was was how far this this thing could go. Maybe that was by a sneeze, but nobody really says. How you know by which method you know it, will it travel faster, sneeze or a cough? I would think a sneeze, of course, is much more violent than would you know um, you know literally you know blow across because you could you could you could spit you know pretty far if you wanted to. So I would think a sneeze would be somewhat on that level. So you know it's it's, it's all it's all difficult. I just say you just, just you mashed up, man. I mean I don't think there's any safe. I don't know if there's any real safe distances. I just know if you're in an office or you're in a close space. Um, and you're working with people or you're out, you know, you're, or you're at a, in a movie theater or restaurant or something else like that. I don't, you know, I, I just generally think I don't know if the distances are far enough for, for people to be safe. So you imagine they, they lay down all this tape and, you know, these little icons on the ground. <laughs> you know, it's often not now, according to this article. No, uh, I, I think I think I think they um I think initially they knew that the distances, you know, the distance guidelines were not adequate but they have to kind of be reasonable you know with the you know if you look at any business you know it's going to be hard to actually implement even the, the, uh, the normal social distancing let alone uh the distancing uh necessary to, to totally prevent you from being exposed so it was kind of like a compromise so to speak however with widespread uh with a widespread of just one mile per hour Everything changes. Under these conditions, droplets can reach six feet within two seconds and then keep going. And with a widespread of 10 miles per hour, they reach 20 feet in a mere 1.6 seconds. These numbers are especially relevant given that the average wind speed in uh, most major US cities hovers around 10 miles per hour. This does not imply because there's a uh, there's a ten mile a ten mile per hour wind that the nearby person will be infected, says Drakakis. One of the biggest uncertainties is what is the exposure time for a person to be infected. However, the fact that six feet is recommended as the distance we need to stay apart from each other is something we need to consider in an open space. And these scientists and doctors generally occur. Uh, concur that COVID-19 can be transmitted through these droplets, but as Drakakis says, there's no firm science about the about the amount 
of the virus and the length of exposure that it takes to actually acquire the illness. Still, you can clearly see uh, from the above charts that the density of the droplet cloud does decrease over distance, especially in higher winds, which implies that added extra social distancing could help ensure public safety. In the long term, Dracarcus imagines we'll need to rethink our public um, spaces during pandemics, knowing that these droplets can spread farther than previously thought, but most of us are wondering what we can do now, knowing that aerosols spray uh, farther than previously considered. Just as summer is around the corner and much of America is opening back up, question. I don't think we have to panic and stay uh, 20, 30, or 300 feet away, we don't know exactly what is the amount of droplets and the amount of virus that will infect you, says Dracarcus. The thing I recommend as a common person is if you're in a place and there's a light breeze or a strong wind and you're going to sit uh, close to someone, take, it, uh, take this into account. As for Dracarcus himself, seeing the data he compiled firsthand, he says, he would not sit down six feet away from a stranger in a breeze. But it's a very personal thing, he says. It's difficult to give recommendations on how to live your life. I mean, they, you may not have any wind blowing. It just so happens that the wind is <laughs> just kicked up in the, in the next, you know, five uh, uh, milliseconds or nanoseconds or something like that. You have no way of controlling that. All these people out there protesting, um, I don't know, man. There's a lot of uh, crying and sneezing and coughing and, you know, from the uh, pepper spray being sprayed on them and, you know, people running around with milk and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think we're going to see a third outbreak later, you know, if the protests keep going through the summer. Oh, that, 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 that's for sure. Um, we also see now that, you know, um, even in hot climates, People are catching, um, you know, this, you know, you know, you know, the, the COVID. So it's not like, you know, you know, this is going to go away, you know, you know, you know, during the summer. Um, you know, I saw a police officer, uh, you know, grab a mask off a guy and spray, spray, uh, you know, spray in his face, uh, spray some pepper spray in his face. I thought that was really ill, but um, yeah, people are really close up with each other and getting pretty busy out there. So I, I, I suspect. Uh, you know, they're all wearing masks, so that will keep some of the some of the infection down. But I definitely think we're going to see um, quite quite a bit more. Uh, this reminds me a little of back in um, 1918 when they were having um, uh, parades and stuff. This was after the war, and they were having parades in certain towns, and they were saying people should not be, you know, t you know, mobbed up together, and they were doing it anyway. And then they had another break outbreak that was severe. And it really took a lot more people out. So um, I, I think, you know, any large, you know, gatherings of people are this is pretty much, I don't think, a very, a very good idea. You know. But since we're doing it, I think we're just going to have to just brace and, and get ready um, for, um, for, the next, for the next round. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely going to spread, man. I just cannot see. I mean, they're talking about reopening schools if six feet is not enough <laughs> how are you gonna are you, why are you gonna deal with these pack, uh, classrooms what are you gonna do about that what are you gonna do about office spaces with cubicles and stuff like that I, I, I'm having a hard time trying to understand um, if you don't need to send these people into these uh, facilities don't send them what, what, what is the desire to open up a school and stick a classroom of 20 to uh, 25 kids in there with no, you know, th there is no way to really social distance in, with that much capacity. It's just not possible. It's not feasible to be inside of a classroom with 25 people coughing or, you know, spreading, spreading that level of germs. And we really haven't gotten a, a clutch on, on uh, as to what to do with this type of stuff. I don't know. Oh wait, my mind. Sounds, sounds crazy to me. So um, yeah. 
you know, uh, you know, I, you know, we're 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 going to try to get to um, uh, what's that word again that I um, um, uh, crowd immunity or whatever. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll, we'll we'll get to it, but um, how many you know how many lives would be at risk is another question. I mean, how many people will die from this will be another question. If not even die, man, I imagine you know the ones who just get so extremely sick that you know. Uh, you know, I, I saw one case or one or two cases where, you know, um, the, the, the person's lung capacity was so bad, man, it, it kind of damaged their brain because the brain couldn't get enough air to it. Yeah, I mean, people, there's definitely going to be end organ damage here. You know, a lot of people are going to have damaged hearts, damaged lungs, and, you know, um, you know, the liver repairs itself pretty quickly. So uh, I think the livers will, 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 will repair um Okay, but but they, you know, but but you know, I think there'll be kidney damage as well. Um, you're gonna have people who who are gonna be, you know, well, they'll, they'll survive, but they're gonna be, uh, you know, quasi fucked up. Yeah. You know, and, um, and that's, well, that's I, really I think it, so. I think one of the problems that you know when you talk about you know that term, uh, you know, herd immunity, um, when we look at you know the flu, I mean, we ha- we have yet to establish herd immunity to the flu. Because every every, yeah. every every year there's you know there's new and different strains these these viruses are consistently mutating I'm mean, and, and and there's various reasons why you know obviously you have the the actual hybridization of viruses but also just environmental factors uh, you know radiation you know uh, you know can affect uh, different uh, you know pathogens life cycles and especially particularly the reproductive cycle um, and you know alter them genetically so you know, these, these viruses are consistently changing. Um, you know, I, I don't foresee herd immunity. Now, what I do foresee at some point, perhaps a, 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 vac- a vaccine of some sort. Um, but but the, the, the problem is, is that, you know, people don't really understand the gravity, the potential gravity of this infection, because, um, you know, there's people who actually, you know, walk around, you know, and asymptomatic uh, for the totality of, of the viral uh, uh, um, infection. Some people have mild symptoms. Some people require hospitalization, but they, the symptoms resolve. You know, then a small percentage of people actually require intensive care, and then even smaller percentage actually succumb to the come to the virus. But um, people look at that as like, well, you know, it's it's not really that big of a deal, you know, you know, or and they or they think, well, you know what, um, you know, I'm young and healthy, you know, I don't have to worry about you know getting it, um, and you know that's just one of those things where, you know, people. It's almost like a, it's almost like a tangent of bystander apathy where people look at it as somebody else's problem to resolve. You know, I'm you know, you know, if, if, if I'm not in the healthcare industry, then it's really if I'm not in the healthcare industry and I'm not in I'm not in government, it's not my problem. You know, let me let somebody else resolve the problem. You know, ditto for pollution and trash and, you know, just various other what we consider social problems. Everybody looks at it as something that someone else should resolve. Not me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I you know. I mean, we've been having big discussions about you know opening up the NBA, opening up baseball, opening up the NFL. What a disaster this is going to be! What a disaster! I mean, you well, have a lot it, of people. You know, it's almost like uh, when, when we go back I to the. Say this. Uh, oh, go ahead. I just want to say this: you have a lot of people who don't believe. That, that there's even a, a big problem on here. I haven't seen the bodies. I ain't seen the numbers. I don't believe it. Mm-hmm. I think this is a scam. This is not true. I got a couple of friends. I ain't seen anybody. I don't know anybody who's got it. I don't know. Nah, man, this ain't real, man. Yeah, yeah people out here thinking, it's this, thinking this is a big hoax. I, there are a lot of people out here thinking that this is this is not what they what, what, um, what people are saying that it is. And um, there's a lot of that out there. It's a lot. It's it's out there stronger than a lot of people might might want to believe. It's a lot of that going on out there right now. So I'm just just want to have people think. You know, there are a lot of people thinking this 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 problem ain't that bad. That we don't really have a real issue here. That, you know that this has been overblown. Well, you know, I, I was saying that earlier when I, when I first came on, I was having some technical difficulties, so the message didn't get relayed as effectively as I wanted it, but. You know, there, there are some people within this particular sector of YouTube, you know, that, you know, you know, they have their theories and, and, and you know, I'm, I'm not here to to antagonize them for having their particular perspective. 
I mean, but I mean, I, I just want to, I just want to illustrate the fact that there are detractors. Um, one particular uh, individual that, that I heard was saying that, you know, he, you know, he has, he doesn't have the technology to actually verify the existence of the virus in particular electron microscope to see the virus um, and actually, uh, you know, view it. Um, uh, and so because of that, um, you know, he, he doesn't necessarily believe that the virus truly exists. And then, you know, they cross reference that what, uh, you know, particular, you know, groups that might benefit from the, uh, the pandemonium that ensued from uh, what, what, from an alleged viral uh, uh, pandemic. So uh, again, you know, like, like that, that's, that goes to what I said earlier, you know, whatever blanks that are there will be filled in potentially with misinformation. Um, and, you know, it, Personally, um, the problem is that the problem that I have personally is that, you know, the, the, the people that are that are naysayers, not everybody, but, you know, there are some naysayers that eventually end up, you know, in, in a facility like mine. And it, and it goes beyond, uh, you know, COVID-19, pr- various other ailments that people believe that, you know, some of the preventive measures that they've been uh, educated about, uh, you know, are nonsensical. Like, I don't need to do certain things. I don't need to prevent you know, uh, whatever uh, virus or bacteria, you know, I don't need to do certain things, you know, uh, it's all a hoax and you're just trying to control people. And then when they get, you know, when they get sick with certain things, then it's like, oh, you know, they want to become an advocate at that point. And they want to have Facebook campaigns and GoFundMe accounts because, you know, you know, you know, now they've fallen victim, but it's like, we've been telling you all along, but at the end of the day, the actual burden that, that, that ensues from even a simple infection like this, it goes far beyond what you've actually paid into the system. Like somebody who requires, you know, a month long ICU stay and then, they, then, they're, then they're on a regular unit for another month and then they go to a, a long-term care facility. I mean, like, like the amount of money that costs, you know, a, a, a particular uh, insurance group, you know, and then you look at the amount of premium that you've paid it doesn't cover the amount of costs that you've incurred. And so now that cost has to be amortized across everybody else who is actually being responsible. And that's unfair. Everybody else that took necessary precautions, now they got to pay for you because you want to be careless or because you said that this was all a hoax and this was, you know, this is just some type of ploy to control people. And that's unfair. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I totally agree as far as people being 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 kind of senseless and thinking that this is a hoax but as far as the medical system is concerned the cost and all that um unfortunately i i think um you know if we had a you know nationalized healthcare system it, it wouldn't be that expensive uh i think the medical industry is, is about profit than anything else and it's fucking a lot of people over with with these high costs uh which i think are uh, are are absolutely rapacious and um and, and unconscionable but but as far as um uh, you know, you, you know, people not taking care of themselves and looking at this as if it's a hoax or something. I, I totally agree. I think, uh, I think it's, I think it's crazy that people are are are, are thinking that and that this is some kind of hoax. And it's out there stronger. It's out there stronger than 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 many of us would might like to um to to think. But there's a lot out there, you know, thinking this. I wonder if you know. <laughs> I wonder if the police are breaking up these protests and saying, no, you can, you can, you can demonstrate, but just be six feet away from each other, right? But you know, practice social distancing and something like that. You know, I don't know, man. Um, I'm seeing all types of you know crazy videos of people, um, you know, locked in chains together, blocking highways, you know, just pre-pandemic that might have been a cool idea. During pandemic, I'm like, yo, I was to stay home. I'll protest from my uh, from my uh, my laptop or something like that, man. Like, I, I can't be out there with you all, man. And um, you're talking about going into a uh, phase two, phase three, reopening of the economy. You know, 25 people up to 50 people into a small location. Um, all these lines on the floor, you got to stand right here, you got to stand over there, you got to go down this aisle, you got to follow these arrows. That's not, you know, who wants to go to a gym? Imagine that, a gym. People, you know, working out with masks on their face and grunting and, and, and uh, PPE or uh, uh, gloves on, you know, 
still getting blisters, man, not really getting a good grip on that barbell, man. Just, it's, it's not, I don't know, it's not the business, man. It's not the business at all. For sure. Yeah, sure. not the business, man. Can't, can't really deadlift, man, with some, with some uh, like Texas gloves on, man. Well, you know, there, there are some gyms that are actually open now. And, I'm, you know, I'm seeing some people, you know, on my Facebook who are, who are now, you know, you know going, going, going back to the gym. And they're working out with masks on. It's kind of crazy to see. Well, I just read an article uh, earlier this morning that said that although um, a good portion of the gyms opened up in, in, in some of these states, it said a lot of people are not showing up. A lot of people are not showing yeah. up. And, and you know the, the the gyms are bad news, man. I mean, you know these are places where you can get lit up pretty easily. Um, and I'm, I mean, you know, my understanding also is that you know um, this COVID can be also trans transmitted through through through, through fecal matter. So you know, uh, yeah, I go, you know, you know, when I go to my gym, my Vernon barbell, you got these, you got these, you got these male dudes walking in there blowing up the fucking bathrooms, shits, damn, they're smelling all through the damn freaking hallways, and I don't. The fuck are these people eating? And um, that mass you know gainer. that could get you. It, it's it, it's it's I don't know I don't know what it is. And these guys will walk around you know skinny as fuck, but taking all this shit and they're still skinny, and weak looking, and just highly succulent. Well, well, now now, but now but we... that blowing up the toilets and and and, and, and got you you know this just coming out in the damn hallways. And I'm like, you can get infected by by, by that. You know I want to yeah. I want to be around these nasty ass made it maybe it's shit well, is in, well, man. For, for for those of you guys that are actually like on my Facebook or my Instagram, I've 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 put up some posts of myself allegedly being in the bathroom. Now no faces are shown, but I, I've actually posted pictures of some of the nonsense I see in the bathroom, uh uh uh, uh to, to include people like 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 here's my thing, right? Number one, why how do you need to go go to the bathroom? to defecate you just got to the gym and i know you came from home because you ain't got a job so how do you leave from home come to a public location to use the bathroom in that particular manner that's problem number one number two and I blow the people, and, 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 and blow the shit and blow the shit off the floor yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like like you walk past, look at so you've been at home all up. day you've been at home all day you've been at home all day because you don't got a job you could have used a toilet in your own home a clean toilet, but you want to come to a public bathroom. Okay, I'll give you that. But my problem is, is that you go, you do your workout. You go, you go, you go uh, uh, take a shower, right? You walk out of the shower barefoot. Now you went to the shower barefoot. That's problem number one. You walk out of the, sh out of the shower barefoot. You just showered. You walk barefoot into the bathroom and then blow it up. And I got pictures on my on my Instagram to prove it. This is the type of nonsense I see. People are nasty. So it's like my, my whole thing is like they so worried about the COVID-19. They've been a, a, a petri dishes walking around. Yeah. Yeah. Man, these, man, man, these motherfuckers <laughs> are these mayos, they are fucking nasty. It's, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want they are nasty. These motherfuckers are hyper nasty. And you know. You, sometimes you don't even have sufficient soap in the bathroom. And I'm sitting there saying, this is a gym. How we don't have sufficient soap? Look, guys coming in there, blowing the joint up just, just and walking around. Then, and then you're going to be picking up weights behind these sucker legs? Forget about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a disaster. It's a disaster, man. I, I don't know. I mean, y, YMCA, YWCA, I've heard those facilities are disasters um, pre-COVID anyways. I can't imagine them being um, you know, open up during during the pandemic. I I, I don't see it. Ain't no way, man. These the, these guys are these guys are bioterrorists. They're walking bioterrorists, man. And, and they, I know they're not trying to be that, but but that's what they are, man. They don't even know they're terrorists, but they are. <laughs> but they are. <laughs> yeah, porcelain terrorists, man. Porcelain terrorists, man. These guys are horrifying, man. Up in there. Go with it. Yeah, straight jihad up in the uh, up in the uh, laboratory, man. Um, a lot of a lot of is going up in there. So, so um, somebody, oh, hold on, there's somebody here, Optimo. So you never you never lit up a bathroom? Nope, I never go to the gym and light no bathrooms up. I only I don't I don't I don't even do that in 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 the gym. I don't even do it in there. So yeah. so no, 
I don't do that. No, no. Yeah, and the thing is, why would you want to do that? Why do you have to wait till you get there? Like Trish says, like, why do you have to wait till you get there? Like, who who does that? Um, you know, it's just one of those things. When you work out, you're not really supposed to do that. It's either you do it before or you do it after, but you don't do it and then go straight to work out, man. You know, you, you liable to uh, make a mess even more while you're there. So, uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. You know, it's it's what these sucker ladies are taking. You know, they're taking all this, like say, mass gain, weight, this. They, they're eating all this <laughs> fucking garbage. That you know, you know that that, that that they're buying online from from, from from these from these from these rapacious, horrific companies that sell them pure poison. You know, you're not healthy taking all this crap, and then you, you if you're blowing up the bowl, if you're blowing shit up horribly, you're putting bad stuff in your body. Yeah, bad stuff is going into you. It's coming out of you. That's why it's that's why it's like that. And then they got COVID on top of it. Yeah, these guys don't know what they're doing. You know, you know, you know, they, they don't know what they're doing, man. It's, it's, it's horrifying. Man, listen, I go to the gym, right? And I can't speak for all gyms. But the gym I go to, I know they don't clean enough. I see people at the sink brushing their teeth. Like, I mean, they're doing a whole, like, I'm like, what are y'all? This is a, a filthy public bathroom. <laughs> this is why people don't care about COVID, because it's like they already got everything else anyway. Yeah. No, nah, that's yeah. that's why I'm, you know, I, I love my gym. You know, we we got we got a few IFBB pros in there and some real top, uh, you know, power lifters in there. Larry Wheels and them would be in there. You know, when he comes to New York, you know, that was his home gym when he was here and um, all that. You know, so Butterlade, you know, you know, we getting swole, we hitting heavy ass weight. You know, real, real, you know, a real man's man type of situation. But these these these, these sucker leg grays coming in there, man, with twelve inch arms and. Eating fucking weight gain and all that, just blowing up the joint, just horrible, just just horrible shit going on. I don't, I think these gyms are dangerous places to go into. They they they're very dangerous, and even my gym, Holly Bud Lake, but very dangerous to go into. I would I wouldn't go in there, especially with with the with the kind of people that are in there. In the state. Very dangerous, very dangerous. Uh, Zanto's clutch, <laughs> Zanto's clutch is a funny bastard, man. Uh, he says uh, old beefcake supplemental consuming ass dosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. I don't know, man. Yeah, they, they, I, I don't even think it. I don't even think it's these supplements. I think it's that muscle milk that they go get from the Seven Eleven, and they think they're doing something, man. They think they're getting live, man. Looking crazy. They, they're buying all this online shit, and and you can see it's it's these toxins that are in it, and it's coming out of them. This stuff is no good. If if you if you eat a proper meal and you have a lot of um 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 uh, you you're eating a proper amount of protein you're eating a proper amount of um of, of your vegetables and you're balanced out and so forth you you, you it shouldn't smell like that at all you shouldn't be smelling like yeah. that you shouldn't be i mean these guys smell like somebody it's like a dead body coming out of it. it's crazy it's like what the fuck are you people doing you know they're and they're small they're weak they're sucker late i mean it's 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 it's, it's horrifying man they're, going, they're, they're going walking in they're walking into yeah. the bathroom barefoot let that sink in. After they take well, I don't see a lot of guys come. I don't see a lot of guys coming to my gym barefoot because they don't let you walk around the gym barefoot with weights because you know they got insurance policies and stuff like that. that you, you can't do that. No, I'm not talking about they walk. Sleep. They walk around the bathroom barefoot. Like they come out of the shower. Well, they took a shower with no shower shoes on, and so they walk out of the shower directly into the toilet area barefoot. I got well, the pictures. Of you know. It's it's not even that I'm telling you, it's these dudes blowing the joint up where where now you've got the stuff in the air and you can't get away from it. It's in the air. It's in the fucking air, man. These guys are these guys are literally bio. They, these guys are bio weapons, man. I mean, it's it's fucking horrible. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I ain't going into the gym, and my gym is highly buddly. We got serious cats in there. You know, I'm only going to go. I don't go to a commercial gym. I go to gyms that are, you know, that got 200 pound DBs. And all that kind of stuff because I can't, I, I, you know, I, I can't lift that lightweight. I gotta fuck with that. I gotta fuck with that live kinks. The shit. And at the end of the day, there are guys in there who are just totally irresponsible. The nastiest people walking around, and um, and it's horrifying. It's horrifying. And, and walking in there now is dangerous. That, that, that would be a very dangerous thing to do because because I'm inclined. If you over there blowing up the toilet, I may kick the door, but it's fucking kick you in the head. Get the fuck out of here. Knock your ass out. Carry his ass out of here. That, that, that's that's what I'm inclined to do because these people, you know, I don't know what they're doing 
the meals and all that, like you're saying, the weight gain is all this other kind of crazy shit. It's just, it's, it's not doing these people any good. It's not doing them any good. And they're blowing the place up. Um, and they're coming in there to blow the place up, which is, is beyond me. I, I just, I, I, I just don't, I don't understand why are you coming to the gym to blow up the place? I just don't understand it. It makes no sense to me. All right, man, let me uh, close out, man. Thank you all for joining us. Please hit the like button. If you've already done so, share the video if possible. Hit that notification bell so you get all the updates from the Black Brain Trust community, those posting on the community. Tab.